opportunity to speak here. And uh, especially I thank very much for the service around hotel and visa and uh, flights and so on. So, before I'm going to present my paper about uh, variable selection in cluster analysis, I will start with a prelude. Uh, the prelude is about uh, another view on bootstrapping. It's bootstrapping in modern arts. And there was an exhibition uh, two years ago in Berlin. And you see here two bootstrap samples. And uh, they are arranged in uh, five times five cells, colored. Uh, by bootstrapping, uh, which uh, has a database 25 colors. This is a work of uh, the painter Gerhard Richter. He's alive and uh, was born in Dresden. And okay, this is uh, only a pure view of, of the bootstrap sample itself. It's not the statistic, only the bootstrap sample. In statistic, we use bootstrapping as a tool. And we understand bootstrapping as a tool. But here is only a presentation of uh, the bootstrap example. You see here uh, multiple uh, observations, okay? And you see here, for example, in this uh, table on the left hand side, that the light green is missing, which occurs here in the left hand table. Uh, right hand table. Okay. And uh, this is one of, of the exhibition halls here. And there's bootstrapping everywhere, and uh, people will come and will see this. Okay. A, most, a more famous example of, of our work of this uh, uh, painter Richter is the cathedral in Cologne. And there's a stained glass window consisting of um, uh, 11,500 pixels, like squares, in now uh, uh, 72 colors. Are randomly arranged by means of bootstrapping also, but uh, there is an additional uh, mathematical property here. You have a, a, some kind of symmetry. Uh, oh, wait. This. Oh. Yes, yes. This uh, long window on the left hand side is, for example, symmetric to this long window, and this long window is symmetric to this long window. But that's, that's not uh, statistic. <laughs> okay, and here you will see uh, at the right hand side a detail of this famous uh, work here, I think. And okay, now I uh, will come to my out my talk. There's an uh, outline. First, I give some state of the art of introduction, and uh, I say something then about. Uh, non-parametric uh, resampling techniques and, of course, uh, about uh, measures of stability. Uh, the aim is to use non-parametric uh, resampling techniques to estimate some measures. And uh, then I come to the main topic, the proposal of a variable section that works bottom-up. It starts with univariate clustering and goes uh, to bivariate clustering and so on. And of course, uh, there are special variants here, and I will uh, say something about a special variant which is, which is, which is used uh, often. So, um, okay, variable selection is a well known problem in many areas, and the hope is. Uh, that the structure of interest may be contained in only a small subset of variables. This well established in uh, supervised classification or uh, regression analysis and uh, so on. But in contradiction to these methods, uh, um, in cluster analysis, cluster analysis is, it's a more difficult problem because, because usually nothing is known about uh, the true class structure. Uh, and nothing is known about the number of the true number of clusters K. <clears throat> okay, there are many uh, papers on variable selection clustering, um, mainly based on special cluster separation measures, such as the Davis and Baudin criterion, that is the ratio within cluster dispersions. There are many kinds of this. 
and between cluster separation. And I recommend to read, for example, the work of oh, the work of Raftery and Dean. They considered a variable selection for model-based clustering using the Gaussian mix mixture model here for k uh, mixtures. This is the a priori or the mixing uh, propor proportion here, and this is the, the uh, normal density. Okay. And they, uh, they use, for example, the base rule, and uh, so it follows that uh, an observation x is classified into g if this has the maximum value of the posterior probabilities. Here you see in the universe Gaussian mixtures, and uh, this is a uh, so-called so borderline mixture, this uni model in this case, and if you uh, uh, if you go uh, if you make a, a greater difference of the of the location parameters, you get a bimod bimodality, and often this is a concept of clustering. But okay, this can also be a concept of clustering here. So. Um, uh, is it true? So you basically you try to test two hypotheses. So once you have one cluster as a zero hypothesis, and uh, right and right, you have an alternative of two clusters. The statistics sounds like based on our test uh, between null and uh, hypothesis and alternative. Could we, could we interpret in this way? No, I, I think it's uh, the, the, the right way. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> this uh, the, uh, the, the picture on the, the, this picture on the, the left hand side is a so-called borderline picture. You can uh, use this when you have density-based clustering, and you say that uh, all clusterings with a greater difference in the in the location parameter or smaller uh, variants within clusters are. Uh, then you can test uh, this. This are uh, uh, such a uh, cluster. This is, uh, but uh, there are many concepts. You can here see also that there are, there are in reality two clusters. But, or two, but, two. but this is the picture in which actually null hypothesis is not rejected. No, if you go from unimodality, it's, uh, it's, it's so, so I mean, you start from unimodal distributions and you try to, to bring mm -hmm. them uh, uh, separately and with some uh, minimal distance you see these two modes and this is the, way, the point where you start to identify two clusters instead of one. Mm -hmm. so this is, uh, uh, intuitively what, what one would expect in this clustering problem. So if you see significantly two modes, you say there are two clusters, otherwise there is just one. Yes, if you assume that there are a, a, a model, a statistical model in the background, uh, like the normality of a mixture, okay. Mm -hmm. But I will uh, uh, present a general approach here to variable, variable selection using non permitted bootstrapping only based on criteria of uh, stability. And I will uh, show you some criteria uh, later on. It's, for example, the adjusted rank index here, which, which operates only on the confusion matrix, matrix containing the counts of both the correct classification and the misclassification. So we go, uh, we do, we do not uh, consider uh, uh, density is also on, we consider only uh, the confusion matrix and estimate the stability. And of course, if you uh, make a confusion matrix of these two clusters here, the error rate is much higher than if you make a confusion matrix of these, cl these clusters by simulations. So this is the background. So we will be very general here. And uh, okay, general means it makes use only of measures of stability based on the misclassification probabilities that come from crossing two partitions of 
uh, two clusters of two uh, uh, results. And okay, this method can then be applied to almost any cluster analysis method. There are many heuristic methods and there are many model-based methods, but you can use, you can investigate the stability of every method by this uh, proposal here. Okay, and uh, uh, on the one side of the confusion matrix, uh, there will be the original clustering, which stability has to be investigated, and on the other side, say the columns, there will be the bootstrap clustering, for example. So, um, uh, now some words about uh, this, uh, uh, the, the, the notation here. Usually the starting point of cluster analysis is a data uh, matrix X with I observations and J variables. And okay, cluster analysis means simply finding a partition of the set of I uh, observations into K non-empty clusters with some restrictions, okay. And the clusters should be as stable as possible. That means they should be reproduced to a high degree of the data set is changed in a non-essential way, for example, by bootstrap. And, uh, okay, the clustering of a random round sample of the data should lead to similar results in the case that there is a real cluster structure there. Excuse me, we don't uh, know the capital K, the number of clusters. No, I don't know it, but I have to investigate all numbers of K. And choose initial capital K. Uh, I, usually, when I can start with, with k equals two clusters, okay, and then uh, consider three clusters and so on. But you can also give a um, given parameter that is, you say uh, the maximum number of clusters is ten, or the minimum number of clusters is uh, three, as you expect. So, so and uh, okay, you use uh, would bootstrapping to uh, investigate the stability. And uh, this, this non-parametric bootstrapping is a statistical method you can uh, use for uh, uh, estimation of uh, any, any kind of uh, statistics. And this is a sampling with replacement, as you've seen in the first uh, picture of Richter. And, uh, well-known alternative for sampling methods such as subsampling and so on. And uh, in clustering, uh, so is our experience, we have some investigations taken here in this field. Bootstrapping outperforms subsampling, uh, especially in the case of model-based clustering. If you use uh, heuristic methods that, such as minimum spanning tree or hierarchical clustering, then uh, uh, subsampling and uh, bootstrapping works uh, similar. So uh, you have here now a uh, um, uh, regional partition and you have a bootstrap clustering. This is uh, clustering, the same method based on the bootstrap sample and now, is, uh, now you need a, a measures of uh, the, the measures the stability of such a clustering and uh, the recommended uh, measure is the adjusted runt, runs index that is, uh, which is equivalent to Cohen's kappa and this adjusted runt index uh, is independent on class numbering this is very uh, uh, very uh, important advantage in clustering and uh, okay it's well established otherwise there are other measures like uh, the, such as the jacquard, jacquard measure this is uh, simply the uh, is between sets simply the, the, the intersection of two sets uh, divided by the union of two sets and you can do if you have this for two clusters you can uh, do this uh, uh, you can compute a uh, capital uh, 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 a capital uh, uh, 
gamma here, capital K gamma uh, for all classes which uh, constitute one partition into K in the capital K classes. Yeah. This is the recommendation only here. You can so, uh, are your clusters, uh, uh, is, uh, so usually clusters uh, assume to be nominal open. Do you allow that your clusters overlap? Yes, of course, we have seen uh, this in the, the picture of the uh, universe distribution, normal distribution. They can overlap. Uh, but what is the meaning of cluster? So is there yes, a, there are different concepts. Your yeah, modality is one concept, okay? And okay, uh, well known separation is another concept. Uh, I mean, if you, if you do clustering and then one point comes, you have to assign the cluster, or you, you can do only a random assignment so, if okay. they are overlapping. So, okay. No? okay, so okay. so you allow for overlap? Yes, I allow for all uh, types, concepts of clusters here at this time, but the stability uh, of such a very overlapping clustering will be very low. And this is the measure. So now it come, comes the, the, the proposal. Uh, um, I st start clustering uh, 20 years ago, and the usual, the usual uh, doing was to take all information available to clustering. But uh, this is the way around. We start here with uh, assessment of the evidence of universe clustering results. That, is, that means we are looking for the most stable universe clustering in the sense of this uh, measure of stability. And then, second step, we are looking for the best partner of the variable count in step one. And the hope is to find the most stable bivariate class, clustering in this way. And uh, so to go further on in this uh, procedure until a uh, stopping rule is uh, uh, in action. Okay, the, the, the advantage of such an uh, approach is that you can uh, easily visualize uh, these, in, for example, in two dimensions or in three dimensions and you can prove it. Uh, what means univariate? Just univariate. One, one component or uh, one dimensional projection? So could you rotate? Only, only one variable. One but variable. of course you can use uh, uh, principal comp component analysis before and then use as databases the, the, principal, the scores of the principal component analysis. It's an it's a, it's a open question which principal component uh, uh, reflects the cluster structure. It's usually, you, you take the, no, the, the principal components with the grade, greatest eigenvalues, but uh, clustering is different, and uh, maybe the fourth or the, the fifth uh, uh, principal components. PCA is not, not efficient for no. clustering, so typically uh, one takes independent components which are much more suitable for. So, no, okay. this was an idea, an additional idea. We start with, uh, with the, the original variables here. Yeah, okay. So, this is what I will call <laughs> So, uh, uh, <laughs> you have to quantify what essential means, uh, so a stop criterion of increment of stability, delta such as delta uh, equals uh, this value can be used. Uh, you have, uh, you take, uh, have to take in, in mind that the, the up the maximum value of a just run index is 1, and also for the uh, average jacquard value is 1. So the computational <laughs> complexity decreases with the number of steps. Okay, in the first step, you have to do uh, uh, J univert clustering, and in the second step, you have to, uh, to perform out uh, J type uh, minus 1. Uh, Bivert clustering and so on. And hierarchical clustering looks uh, fit and proper for our sampling proposal because of the usual unique and parallel clustering of the observations into partitions of k equals 2, 3, and more clusters. So, uh, 
there's an open question how many clusters and you can hopefully answer this in this uh, framework also. So in contradiction to the result of partitional clustering methods, in contradiction to the hierarchical clustering method, it is more difficult to use partitional clustering like k-means and so on, or the partitional model-based clustering, because you have to do all for for the number of clusters k, and of course it's well known that uh, these methods depend usually uh, on the initial partition you start with, and therefore you have to do a, a very uh, many many steps to get an estimation. So uh, I will uh, come to an example. It's a well-known example of uh, 200 Swiss banknotes. There are two uh, classes here, and every class contains uh, 100 banknotes, and uh, one class is false, and the other uh, class is original. And uh, the appropriate model-based clustering, or the simplest appropriate model-based clustering is the, within the sum of, of squares criterion, so special criterion of model-based clustering here. We use only the, the track of this, uh, of this uh, estimations here. And you can write this in equivalent form using the squared Euclidean distances here. So, this is uh, a usual starting point. This is an example uh, how works such a uh, hierarchical clustering. You start here with uh, pairs of objects and uh, merge them together until all objects uh, are in one cluster. And uh, usually, you, this is the, the usual approach. You take all the information you have, six variables, for example, in this case, and uh, okay, this is a very good uh, classification here. Here are the uh, the original banknotes, and here are the false one. And you see they are uh, a little bit different. It's the first principal component, okay. And here I uh, show the the jacquard values, and you see this cluster. This, this uh, line here is very high, it's nearby one, the maximum value. <coughs> and uh, if you split these clusters, this cluster here, you get uh, uh, lower values, okay. So, uh, that's the presentation, how it works, uh, usual. But uh, now we start univariate clustering. It's only for presentation how uh, cl uh, hierarchical clustering looks like. So, now I take a univariate classification, clustering here and an assessment of stability. And I, I take, I compute uh, 250 bootstrap samples and compare these sample, uh, these clustering results on bootstrap samples with the original one. And you see here the result, is, this is the adjusted rank index. The maximum value is one, okay. And uh, it's a quite different performance of the variables. You see here the diagonal measurement in millimeters is uh, very good for indicating two clusters. At this uh, abscissa, you have the number of clusters. Okay. And you have a nearly random variable here, and this is the left side of the banknote. Okay, and uh, so, uh, you proceed and to, to, to select, uh, for example, this uh, variable yeah, diagonal and you go further on with bivariate clustering. You now use, look for the best partner of diagonal. And here you see the results of uh, bivariate, of five bivariate Vax clustering based on the bootstrap, based on bootstrapping of the ARI. Uh, of adjusted hand index, okay. The same uh, construction of the plot. You have the number of clusters, key, 
and uh, this is the the measure, the Reins measure. And okay, uh, you, here you see uh, that uh, this is uh, the best performance. It is uh, dia diagonal on top of the banknote. And uh, additionally, you have an, uh, a deep uh, increase when you uh, go from three clusters to two clusters. That means this is a very good uh, selection of two variables that uh, already the, 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 true, the, uh, the true class is here. Only one error is counted. This is the same uh, error rate as you use all six variables. So you, you uh, I think uh, this is nearby one. You can't improve this. Uh, you can end now with the information that there are uh, two clusters in the data and that uh, the two variables, uh, diagonal and uh, um, and top, are the main variables here. But we go further on to to uh, to look at uh, at the procedure, but uh, without any. Uh, decision about the number of classes or the, or the number of uh, selection of variables. But it's uh, maybe interesting. You will get um, the results of three variant clustering. And, uh, okay, is it any other mistake? Yes, it's, it's uh, interesting. Not, uh, not correct. But you see here, uh, all three variant clustering uh, have the same behavior, okay, but expect except uh, these three variables. And maybe it's, a, it's an indication that, uh, as, I, as I showed before, that the, the, the false banknotes are not so homogeneous. And maybe you can now, uh, now say uh, why this uh, is the, the, the case. Okay. So in, um, another uh, example uh, using synthetic data. This is, uh, you have here uh, two variables and you see a uh, density plot of the two variables. It's normal variables with uh, uh, different cardinalities and uh, different mean values and different standard deviation. Okay. And um, in addition, I add two random variables, R1 and R2, that are masking variables without any cluster structure. They are uniformly distributed in an interval which, uh, which uh, covers this uh, range here. Okay, the appropriate uh, method will be here this uh, logarithmic uh, sum of squares, but I use here uh, the most simple in this case. And it works also, you will see. So, uh, this is uh, the universe clustering of four variables, and um, Okay, uh, you see that the variable uh, x works very well. It's the highest uh, uh, run adjusted run index. And uh, of course, when you see uh, this picture, this variable x divides very good in three classes here. So, the second good variable is uh, variable y, and uh, it indicates that there are maybe two clusters. But uh, the highest value is, uh, uh, is here for k equals uh, three clusters. And so you uh, select this, var this uh, variable for further investigation. Here's another uh, measure is the average checkout. It uh, works similar or gives similar results. So, uh, this is the step two of the proposal, and uh, you have here bivariate clusterings. You uh, have here the combination of uh, variables um, x and y. This is the this curve here. It has a high performance, and uh, there's a high indication that there are three clusters. Otherwise, the other combinations, uh, the random masking variable, are one and X uh, has a poor uh, performance as well as the 
a random variable to print the uh, n x. This, uh, the improvement is not uh, high here from the top here to this top, and uh, maybe you can uh, use the stop rule here to end with uh, two clusters. Now, uh, of course, we, we know in this data, generated data, the number of errors, and there are only four errors counted for this combination of the two variables. That works very well. So, uh, that's the jacquard. It uh, gives a similar presentation. And, uh, okay, we go a step further and uh, uh, consider tree variable clustering. And you can uh, see that uh, the maximum value is, is, is one, but all curves are far from this maximum value. And uh, that indicates mm, you should not use any of these variables. So the result is two variables, x and y. It works very well. Okay. Um, no. So we can. I have tested this for for uh, for uh, other data here for four thousand thousand points, and you see here uh, uh, such small histograms. It's a very large data set, and it works very well also in this case. So, okay, uh, the. Proposal can be uh, modified, okay? For example, um, okay, in several ways, okay? You can uh, evaluate uh, the stability measures. There are uh, estimates of stability measures, and you can work with these uh, stability measures. For example, Carmona work with uh, this. Uh, these universe stability measures and make a ranking of variables and so on and a combination of variables. You can many things do with, with the result. Um, and okay, in between such a uh, bottom up selection, you can also uh, exclude, uh, drop some variables out of the of the set of variables of the selection selected variables. Okay. So. The special uh, proposal is to start with uh, j times j minus 1 uh, divided by 2 uh, bivariate cluster analysis. It's uh, computationally more expensive, okay, but uh, there are some reasons. Uh, for example, when you uh, consider uh, rank data, and in practice, of, you have often rank data, you, you see the univariate the rank data of nine observations. So two variables, okay, and of course, in a univariate uh, clustering makes no sense. There's no gap in the, in the the values, okay. But in the bivariate case, you can see, okay, you can uh, have a such a structure um, of clusters, okay. And uh, this is an example of uh, real data. You see here only uh, this is a publication statistics. Is in, uh, there are, uh, 100, uh, 227 countries, and you have many uh, uh, many uh, measurements taken on or uh, data taken on this uh, variable, uh, this uh, sub subject. And um, okay, and there are a great scaling problem 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 because uh, the population uh, is very different. For example, China has a very high population and. Uh, small countries and so on, and you have to compare all this, and uh, you have a scaling problem problem uh, of the variables. And so you use of, often the right values. We have here the birth rate and the death rate, and you see clearly, univariate there is nothing with clusters, of course, there's no gap, but uh, bivariate, you see here a, a very uh, a good cluster structure, and you can find this by, you can find these two variables by our procedure. And this is, for example, this is for African countries with a high birth rate and uh, a, oh, with a high birth rate and uh, a high death rate. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I will uh, uh, say some closing words here now. The proposal to a selection and clustering works without using special 
clustering criteria such as the Lucin cluster or Bethlehem cluster variances, and it can be applied to almost any method you have. They are based on non parametric sampling and criteria of stability, such as the adjusted grant index, using confusion tables. And, uh, okay, the computational complexity should be taken into consideration. For example, when you start with fiber clustering, we have much more computational problems when the variable, number of variables is great. And if you start with, for example, with uh, three by R clustering, then uh, it should be uh, unrealistic from the comp computational point of view. Thank you for your attention. There is this method called uh, stability selection of Meinshausen and Mühlmann. This, this reminded me very closely uh, of your approach. Do, do you know connections be, between that? No. It, also, rep uh, it yeah. also depends on resampling of the observations and then finding structures like a cluster structure in, in the data. Uh, on, is it also on variable selection? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it can also be used for clustering yeah, and for, for variable selection. But I think this, this uh, bottom-up uh, uh, approach is, uh, I think, uh, not, so, uh, not so usual, I think. Maybe I thank you for the comment. Okay, so if no question, I suggest to thank all the speakers. <laughs>